Jakota Naga Brenda Gozo Kule Nemehe Jajo Kotoni Keli Namaha Angra Nonzo Kula Namaha Dedrene Gegele Nemosa Say of the Spirit of God There has never been a scarcity of my power all the power that you will ever need I made available to you at the point of your birth. You were born with all of my power. You were not born deficient. You were born complete. Everything that constitutes me was packaged together to give birth to you, saith God. But you will have to place a demand on the resources that are available to you by regeneration. And you place that demand intentionally so you make that power available in the natural. So you see, saith God, when you do not give yourself intentionally to take off and take from my power then you live the life of defeat you live a life that is full of apologies you live a life that attracts sympathy and sorrow then you live under undue pressures saith god i never designed for you to live a life of pressure i designed for you to live a life of rest but you cannot function in rest from the natural you only function in rest from the spiritual from the spiritual from the spiritual that's why in my word i said to be spiritually minded is life and peace to be spiritually minded when your mind is full of the spiritual possibilities that are available to you you function from a place of rest and no devil in hell has what it takes to discomfort your position because you exercise superiority over devils you function in your full capacity saith god you function in your full abilities and all of those abilities are abilities that the devil and his cohorts cannot withstand because the light and darkness saith God has never had a competition oh yeah I said in my word that the light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend the light the light dominates darkness darkness and the light never fights the exit of light is the dominance of darkness and the entrance of light is the absence of darkness so you yield to my spirit and you yield to my word and you take off and take from the resources that I have made available to you in the spirit and use them to live a life of victory and a life of total dominion on the earth saith God thank you father thank you father thank you Lord Jesus praise you father hallelujah I said hallelujah I said, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The focus of our hearts is the focus of our lives. He's the only one that matters to us. He's the only one that makes sense to us. Le croto socala da brena gagolo na moja kalana magalia na mahata negelia. Le brodo zaka la brena kakele na mahata. He's the center of our hearts and the center of our affection. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we rejoice that tonight we again are assembled together to fellowship in the light of your word. We rejoice that we have your word with us. And the entrance of it giveth light. Revelation knowledge is gifted everybody under the sound of my voice tonight. Bodies and yokes are destroyed. Your people built up, equipped, edified. And Jesus is glorified. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. As we say these words, I am born of God. 
I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, and every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody to 30 Days of Glory 2021. Glory! We want to welcome all of you to the service tonight, wherever you're connected to the service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the online community, our brothers and sisters. We're just glad to welcome all of you to the fellowship tonight. And we also want to welcome the Aquaibum community connected right now to the service by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Aquaibum, Passion FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM. We want to welcome all of you to the service. Do me a favor this evening. Call a friend, a loved one, a family member, someone in the local government, someone in the village, someone in the capital city here in Uyo. Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. Our social media community, over 2.5 billion people waiting on Facebook alone right now to be lightened with the gospel of Christ. Help us share the video on your page. Drop them on monogram, telegram, WhatsApp groups, and of course, join as many groups as possible. Let the light of the glorious gospel shine in the hearts and minds of men all over the world. Our campuses around the world, we want to welcome all of you to the service tonight, brothers and sisters. Get ready, it's going to be exciting tonight. Is everybody excited to be in the fellowship tonight can we celebrate the world with a shout glory amen grab your pen your notebook your bible you can be seated with your sweet smart self tonight as we get into the word of his grace amen mm -mm -mm. we're still looking at the emphasis of the holy spirit in salvation the emphasis of the holy spirit in salvation the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19. <clears throat> For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me, Silvanus, Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. Next verse. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen. Unto the glory of God by us. Next verse. Now he which established us with you in Christ. And hath anointed us is God. Next verse. Who hath also sealed us. And given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. So we've been looking at the things of the spirit. And the things that belongs to the believer in the spirit. Look at Romans chapter 15 verse 8. Whoever is on the computer, pay attention and be in the service and don't just be there. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So the writer of Romans, brother Paul, says the same thing he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. That means that Jesus Christ came to fulfill all the promises God made under the law. That is in the old covenant. He summarizes all the promises of God by saying that he has given to us the earnest of the spirit where? In our hearts. We said salvation is being born again. We also said salvation is to be in Christ. We also said salvation means to be saved. We also said salvation can also be referred to as the gift of the spirit. That is, God has given us his spirit. Say with me, everybody, in salvation, I receive the gift of the spirit. Say it again, in salvation, I receive the gift of the spirit. Now look at that promise again. One of the promises in Joel chapter 2 verse 28. Joel chapter 2 verse number 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Now we will see that promise repeated by brother Peter. You know on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 verse 16 and 17. 
Acts chapter 2 verse 16 and 17. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So brother Peter quoted from the prophecy of Joel in Joel chapter 2. And he was referring to the event of Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were together in one accord and in one place. Next verse. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Next verse. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Obviously, Brother Peter picked his quote from Joel chapter 2. So whatever Joel meant is what Peter meant. What Peter meant is exactly what Joel was talking about. So how did Peter know, for instance, that what happened in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 was the same thing Joel spoke about in Joel chapter 2 verse 28? Because in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4, it says suddenly... There was suddenly, now the word suddenly had nothing to do with the fact that they were not expecting. It doesn't mean they were not expecting. Because Jesus emphasized that they should wait and receive. Tarry and receive, wait and receive. In Luke chapter 24, verse 48 and 49. Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Then in Acts chapter 1 verse 5, put it up for me. Acts chapter 1 verse number 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. He already told them they shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Acts 1 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So Joel, you know, so brother Peter was quoting from Joel and all of these references was what Jesus said to them indicating that that promise was about to be fulfilled. In John chapter 20 verse 22, look at brother John's account of the same event. John 20, 22, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Next verse. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. So he gave them clear-cut instructions about the Holy Ghost. That means Pentecost was not a surprise to the disciples. They were not just waiting, I mean moving on the road, and then bam, the Holy Ghost fell on them. No, Jesus told them what to do. And Jesus told them that it was going to happen on the day of Pentecost. Because when Jesus taught them in Luke chapter 24 verse 25 where he called them fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So observe the things concerning himself. And one of those things he must have taught them was the ceremonies of the Old Testament. And one of those ceremonies was the Feast of Pentecost. One of those Old Testament ceremonies he must have taught them concerning himself was the Feast of Pentecost. The Feast of Pentecost was the Feast of Beginnings or New Beginnings. So they knew that on the day of Pentecost something new was going to start. They knew that on the day of Pentecost, something new was going to start. Jesus let them see that that feast was about himself. So we know that what Peter was teaching in Acts chapter 2 verse 16 and 17 must have come from what Jesus taught them 40 days after the resurrection. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus spent those days teaching them the things concerning himself. He told them not many days now. Actually, he should have told them, Nine days from now. Nine days from now. 
Because they just finished the feast of unleavened bread and it's supposed to be 10 days after unleavened bread, we have Pentecost. So now as they were rounding up and Jesus was leaving them in the physical, he said to them, not many days from now, it shall come to pass. And he already told them it was going to be Pentecost. So it was actually 10 days or 9 days from the feast of, of, of the unleavened bread. So God didn't take them by surprise. When Peter was quoting this, he knew that Joel's prophecy had to do with the new beginning or the new creation or the birth of the church. The birth of the church. He knew exactly what it meant. Because you see, you are a product of the teaching you receive. Because Peter had received proper teaching, he knew what the outcome was going to be. Peter must have listened when Jesus was teaching very attentively. So he knew exactly what had happened on Pentecost as the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy concerning the birth of the New Testament church. Notice I said he picked that prophecy from Joel. The word prophecy when Joel said your young men, your, your sons and daughters shall prophesy is the Hebrew word naba, naba. It was used 114 times in the Hebrew lexicon. The Bible has both Hebrew and Greek. Hebrew is Old Testament, Genesis to Malachi. And the Greek translation is actually the New Testament. Or, or what we refer to as Matthew to Revelation. And usually you may need to find out a usage in a language to understand it well. So, that's, that, so that when you are using your own language... You will know how to translate the usage of that from that language to your language for proper and adequate understanding. Now, when you use the word prophecy, the word prophecy in the Hebrew is the word naba. It primarily means to speak by inspiration. To speak by inspiration. Used 114 times. 85% of the time is used is for the prophets of God. 10% of that time is for non-prophets of God. When he said prophesy, it means to speak by inspiration. It means to speak from another source. To speak from another source. It also carries something. It means to predict. To prophesy means to speak by inspiration or to speak from another source. Secondly, it means to predict. To predict, all right? To predict simply means to say what will happen. To say what will happen. So the word prophecy used by brother Joel carried within it to predict. So in other words, when Joel said they shall prophesy, one of the things he meant was that the people shall receive the spirit. And they shall speak by inspiration. They shall speak by inspiration and they shall predict things. They shall predict things. That means they shall foretell things. They shall foretell things. There is foretell to speak by inspiration. They shall foretell. To predict means they shall foretell. To speak by inspiration, they shall foretell. F-O-R-T-H. Foretell. To predict means they shall foretell. F-O-R-E-tell. So there is foretell and foretell. To foretell is to speak from something. To speak forth from something. To foretell is to say it before it happens. To foretell, to say before it happens. To foretell, to speak forth from something. Now notice, that was how the Old Testament prophets functioned. They spoke, they spoke forth. They spoke by foretelling. And also, they spoke by foretelling. Foretelling to speak from. Foretelling to speak before. Foretelling to speak from. 
foretelling to speak before to predict the word prophesy carries to speak from or to speak before to prophesy is to speak from or to speak before notice first peter chapter 1 verse number 10 first peter chapter 1 verse number 10 of which salvation the prophets have inquired and such diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come to you. That's why the word prophecy in the Greek is the word prophetio. Prophetio, which is a translation of the same word naba. Naba. Now, First Peter chapter 1 verse 11. First Peter chapter 1 verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ testified beforehand beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow so the word prophesy from what Joel said carries these two things to say by inspiration or to say by revelation to say by inspiration or to say by revelation. So that means the promise God made in the book of Joel also makes the recipient of the spirit able to say some things before they happen. The promise God made to Joel or through Joel in Joel chapter 2 Joel chapter 2 also makes the recipient of the spirit able to say something before it happens in john chapter 16 jesus is talking about the same thing he is talking about the holy spirit being given john 16 12 <clears throat> john 16 12 i have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Whatever he shall hear, he shall not speak. He shall speak. Did I observe that? He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak. So, he shall not speak, he shall speak. That will be foretelling. He shall not speak of himself. What he shall hear? To hear from, to speak from another. Foretelling. And he will show you things to come. The word show you things to come there means to disclose. So what Jesus said there carries the same two things. Number one, he will speak forth. Number two, he will reveal things. He will speak forth. He will reveal things. So the two things, he will speak forth and also he will show you things to come. Of course, we need to be very careful with the interpretation we give to that verse. Because in this context, Jesus was referring to things to come. Things to come. Now, what things to come? I have always told you in this church that whenever you read... You must read things in context. Always. Always read things in context. What are the things to come? Because there's a context there. In verse 14 and 15, he gives us clarity. John 16, 14. <clears throat> he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Next verse. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. He shall glorify me. He shall take what is mine and shall show. Obviously saying that the Holy Spirit will show you the things that will happen to me. He shall take that which is mine. Okay. The things that will happen to Jesus are the things the Holy Spirit will show you. Because nobody will follow Jesus to the cross. Nobody will follow Jesus to the grave. Nobody will follow Jesus to Hades. 
Nobody will follow Jesus on his resurrection. And nobody will follow Jesus to ascend. That means therefore, the only way we will know what happened on the cross, what happened in the grave, what happened in Hades, what happened upon his resurrection, and from the resurrection to the throne will have to be by the Holy Spirit. So when he says he will show you things, he was referring to the outcome of his sacrificial work from the cross to the throne. That's the context. So basically what he's saying here is the Holy Spirit will reveal what I will do to you. That means it's going to be by revelation. Somebody shout revelation. I want the radio audience to hear you loud. Want to go? Yeah, you're coming up. Come here one more time. And if you love revelation, let me hear you shout it better. All right, so it's going to be by revelation. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 is the fulfillment of that promise in John chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 is the fulfillment of the promise Jesus gave them in John chapter 16, verse 12, 13, 14, and 15. 1 Corinthians 2 fulfills that bit of what Jesus said. Look at it, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither had entered in the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. <laughs> This has nothing to do with your future. Because a preacher who doesn't do his due diligence will say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has prepared for you. The wife that God is preparing for you, I have not seen. The kind of car that God is preparing for you, ears have not heard. That's an abuse of scripture. Because that's not what he's talking about there. If you stay with that context, you free yourself from being disgraced in public. It's not my fault that people get disgraced in public. Is it my fault? Excuse me, is that my fault? Did I call anybody's name? What am I doing? I'm teaching the word of God. And if it exposes you, so be it. After all, the word is light. And what is the job of light? To shine and expose things in darkness. So don't, 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 don't. Don't be uncomfortable with my teaching the word of God in its proper way. It's not my fault. I'm a workman that needs not to be ashamed. And my responsibility is to rightly O to to Glory! <laughs> See, stop that Bible school student. Stop that. <laughs> Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This has nothing to do with your future. I have not seen the kind of car that God has prepared for you. What? That's a materialistic preacher there. This statement was a prophecy made, and it was not made by Brother Paul. No, I have not seen was not made by Brother Paul. Uh-uh. When brother Paul made this statement, he was quoting the, the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah 64 verse 4. Let's read it. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither had the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. So Paul was just quoting brother Isaiah. Now, that prophecy, just like every prophecy, has been fulfilled. Has been, has been. It's not that the car that you will drive, I have not seen it. It has already been fulfilled in Christ. It's not a prophecy concerning God will do what God will do. <laughs> it's what God has done. <laughs> God has not prepared anything for those that love him anymore. Why? Because verse 10 now says, verse 10 of, of that Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10, it says in verse 10, put it up quickly, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10, but God hath revealed them. 
If it is what God will do, he wouldn't have revealed them. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit such at all things, yea, the deep things of God. Next verse. Now observe the next verse. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now watch this. Watch this. Next verse. Now we have received it. So it's not what God is going to do. We have already received what those eyes couldn't see, what those ears couldn't hear, what did not occur to the hearts of men. Now today, because it has been fulfilled in Christ, we have received. Is it clear? Put it up. We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So that promise made of God through Isaiah has been fulfilled where? In Christ. So what was brother Paul saying? God has revealed them unto us. Where did he reveal them? He revealed them in the written world. He revealed them in the written world. In the written world. Look at it further explain Ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 to 3. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 to 3. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word. Next verse. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a fall in few words. It shows that the guy on the computer is not even reading. He puts it, takes it out as he is led. I think I need to do something about that brother there. I hope he's not a sister today. As I wrote a four in few words. So brother Paul uses the same term differently. Because look at verse 4 of that Ephesians chapter 3. Whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge where but where do you how do you understand my knowledge by reading that means it has been documented so that revelation has been put in black and white you can read it now and understand it's not those 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 garbage that they tell you mystery of handkerchief mystery of water for washing leg mystery of and all that is that that's not mystery that's mystical that's not mystery mystery is what is written that has to be explained mystical is baju baju we can't tell where it is gotten from but it performs magic mystery is what is written that has to be explained that's when there is mysterion there is apocalypsis because apocalypsis unveils the mystery that's why brother paul will now say that mystery when you read it when you read it it's not handkerchief and towel that mystery when you read it you will understand my knowledge where in the explanation of Christ. Not in the washing of your leg. If your leg is dirty, wash it at home. Church is not a place to wash dirty legs. I'm teaching here. If your legs are dirty, wash it where? At home. Don't bring dirty feet here. What we need here are feet that bring good tidings. Blessed are the feet of those that bring good tidings. It's been put in black and white. You can read it now and what? Understand. That's why I said in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. Look at the way brought, I love brother Paul. I, I tell you. And are built, not will be built, are already built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. We are already built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. We are already built. 
We are not going to be built. We are already built. Look at 1 Corinthians 3, 11. Brother Paul confirming the same thing that he's saying there. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid. Which is who? Jesus Christ. Someone some time ago said, some few years ago, a man of God in this country, he said God has given him a revelation that he didn't give to Apostle Paul. That God has given him a serious revelation that he never gave to Apostle Paul. That's heresy. All revelations are documented. All revelations, all revelations are documented. So all we do now is build upon the documented revelation. All we do now is to build upon the documented revelation. We are not laying another foundation. The foundation has already been laid. God gave that revelation to chosen men who are apostles and prophets and they combine that in the history of the church. And you have people like brother Paul and everybody who wrote the epistle, every individual that wrote the epistle is an apostle and prophet by brother Paul's definition. Apostles and prophets. They gave the revelation of the church. So what we do now is to build upon it. So notice, the epistles in the scriptures are the highest level of revelation. The epistles in the scriptures are the highest level of revelation a man can ever have about God. The epistles in the scriptures are the highest level of revelation a man can ever have about God. So whenever we talk about revelation, the highest form of revelation is the written word of God. The highest form of revelation is the written word of God. That is the scriptures. And we have been talking about discerning of spirits. The word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. That's not the highest form of revelation. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits is not the highest form of revelation. The highest form of revelation is a written word. You cannot have a higher form of revelation outside the written word. You cannot have a higher form of revelation outside the written word. That's why anything you hear or you see can never be rated alongside the word of God. Anything you see or hear can never be rated alongside the word of God. If you like, die for 30 days and come back. We don't care what you saw after dying 30 days. When you wake up, what you saw is subjected under the scrutiny of the written word. I don't care what you saw. If you like, come back without a mouth. Let only your eyeballs be rolling. I'm teaching here. If you like, let a shorthand appear in the cloud and write something. If it does not tally with the written word, is nonsense. Nothing you will ever see. If you like, be a seer. International. Nothing you will ever see or hear that can be rated along the same side with the word of God. I'm teaching. The gifts of revelation, it seems to me that the way brother Paul classified the gifts of the spirit, you know, he classified them from the level of function and he gave them importance in the list. 
you know, in the other way around from a carnal person's perspective. Why it appears like Paul's classification, he put the utterance gifts first. First. That's how he classified it. In their order. Utterance gives first. Revelation gives second. Then power gives third. A carnal man will put power gives first. Blind eye opens. You will be jumping like a little boy that saw a toy. But you bring a word of prophecy. Praise the Lord. Because a carnal man is spectacular. He's not supernatural. When somebody brings a word of, of edification, glory, a lame man was, yay! Because a carnal man is based on sense knowledge. Is sense, knowledge, perception towards God. What I'm saying basically is the highest form of revelation is the written world. If someone gets up tomorrow with extra biblical revelation, tell him, sir, no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, Jesus Christ. So the highest form of revelation is what? The written world. Not the gifts of the spirit. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits are not the highest level of revelation. So, that's why looking at the prayer of brother Paul for the church at Ephesus. Look at Ephesians 1.17. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation where... In the knowledge of him. Next verse. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Next verse. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power. To us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Next verse. Which he wrought in Christ. When he raised him from the dead. And set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Next verse. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is in the world to come. He is saying to you that the highest revelation is the revelation of what happened to Jesus. The revelation of what happened to Jesus is what we call the gospel. The gospel. The gospel. What Jesus did from the cross to the resurrection and to the throne. He said that the highest form of revelation, there cannot be a new fact. The eyes of your understanding to know what he has done. It's not the eyes of your understanding to know what he will do. What he has done. Not what new can happen. Somebody claimed he went to heaven. You know all those people? Where are they now? It's like in recent time, the way to heaven has been blocked. Because a few years ago, everybody was going to heaven. A lot of women went to heaven. How many of you know? Many of them were women. They were traveling and coming as if they were going to a nature market. <laughs> women. <laughs> This guy claimed that he went to heaven. Now, is it possible for somebody to, to have heavenly visitation? Yes. Brother Paul had one. I was caught up to the third heaven. I saw things that the human mouth is not permitted to discuss. Stephen had another one. My eyes have just been opened. I see the son of God standing at the right hand of the father. Yeah, it's possible. But we must check what you saw to know whether it's really there you went. Because those who go there, we know. And those who went here, here, we know that they went inside here. <laughs> the guy said he went to heaven and when he saw Jesus, Jesus showed him a movie of his whole life. Everything he has done. All the sins he ever committed. 
Because the guy, he said, now Jesus told him, because you are a highly respected G.O. <laughs> I know sometimes church people are sheepish. I know sheep, sheepish. He said, Jesus told him, if, if I can say this about you, as G.O. as you are, what will happen to the ordinary ones? He said, Jesus said to him, normally I will have allowed you to die and go to hell. He said, but I wanted to first of all show you what heaven looks like so that when you go to hell you will know what you are missing. <laughs> Don't let me to be laughing like this. This my laughter is what's annoying some people. <laughs> he gave him a foretaste of heaven. So that when he goes to hell, he'll be seeing what he's missing. <laughs> you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> oh, Lord. But because the G.O. is precious to Jesus. <laughs> he will allow him one more time. One more chance. But he has to be careful. So that these things will not happen again. <laughs> That's a total lie. That's a fatal lie. That's an afternoon lie. That's an unschooled lie. That's an unintelligent lie. That's, uh, that's an analog lie. What does the Bible say? Your sins and iniquities. So where did the video cassette pop up from? Because that vision is given has no scriptural support. It's an insult on the character of God. So the highest form of revelation is the written word. So when Paul was saying he will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge, in the knowledge of him. Where is the knowledge of him? In the written word. How was he going to do it? Ephesians 3.20 Now, now, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. How? According to the power that is coming from above. Where is the power? It's working on your inside. Somebody say the power works in me. So he's not granting you from heaven. He is granting you that spirit of wisdom and revelation from within you. So the prayer is answered from within. Now, what is the highest form of utterance? We have seen the highest form of revelation. What is the highest form of utterance? The highest form of utterance is not speaking in tongues or interpretation. The highest form of utterance is not prophecy. The highest form of utterance is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse number 3. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God calleth Jesus a cause. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So the highest form of utterance is to say that Jesus is Lord. To declare the Lordship of Jesus by the Holy Ghost is the highest form of utterance. That is the confession you made the day you got born again. The day you got born again was the day you uttered the highest utterance any child of God can ever utter. Romans chapter 10 verse 8 to 10. Romans chapter 10 verse 8 to 10. 
But what saith it? The word is not even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Next verse. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto what? That thing you will say that will save you is the highest utterance. That statement you will utter and it will take you from a child of the devil and make you a child of God is the highest utterance. Nothing can be higher than that. And that's the confession you made the first day you got born again. That means the, day, the first day you received Christ was the first day you gave the highest utterance. Highest. Jesus is Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee, every tongue, everybody that Jesus Christ is the Lord. That is the highest form of utterance from the Holy Ghost. Except by the Holy Ghost. And that's the highest utterance a man can make. So there's some people say, what if I don't speak in tongues? What if I, what if I don't speak in tongues? You already spoke by the Holy Ghost the day you got born again. You already spoke by the Holy Ghost. No one can say Jesus is Lord but by. And that's the highest form of utterance. A man can have. And oh yes, you also have to speak in tongues. You also have to speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a follow up to Jesus is Lord. If you already spoke Jesus is Lord, speaking in tongues is a follow up. That's why Jesus is Lord is the highest form of utterance. Our confession of his lordship. And the highest form of revelation is our revelation of who Jesus is. Because the Holy Ghost is the one that reveals Jesus to us. And that is why we are saved. So the highest form of revelation comes at salvation. The highest form of revelation comes at salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3. Please pay attention. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Verse 4. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Verse 6. Verse 6 now. Verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4 6. For God... Who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God where? In the face of Jesus Christ. Whoa. So the highest revelation came at salvation. It is the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's the highest revelation. That's the highest revelation. And the highest utterance is the lordship of Jesus confessed by a man. The highest form of revelation is the revelation of Jesus and what he has done for us. So now, let's get back to the gifts of the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1. Mm, getting blessed. 1 Corinthians, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. We looked at the word gifts, is the word endowment or charisma, which is abilities that were given to you when you got saved. Gifts, endowments, charisma, given to a man at the point of salvation. So the gifts of the spirit are abilities that became yours when you got saved. Abilities that became yours when you got saved. 
Everybody say to me very loud. And remember our radio audience needs to hear you. The gifts of the spirit are abilities. That are available to me. At salvation. Say it again. The gifts of the spirit. Are abilities. That are available to me. At salvation. So he says the same spirit. So now we said there is three, there are three class, classifications of the gifts of the spirit. Number one. Let's go number one. Remember people are listening to you. Number one. Number two. Number three. Power gifts. What are all trans gifts? Number one. Tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Prophecy. What are revelation gifts? Number one. Word of knowledge, number two. Word of wisdom, number three. Discerning of spirits. What are power gifts, number one? Gifts of healing, number two. Gifts of the working of miracles, number three. Gifts of faith. All right, now. <clears throat> so we began on the revelation gifts yesterday. We said that the revelation gifts are to expose things. The revelation gifts are to expose things. Or to uncover things. Or to unveil things. Or to disclose things. To expose things. To uncover things. To unveil things. Or to disclose things. Revelation gifts are gifts that disclose something. They uncover something. Either things that are hidden. Or things that are unknown. They disclose. They uncover the things that are hidden. Or things that are unknown. So revelation gifts will reveal things to you that you did not know before revelation gifts will reveal things to you that were not on your mind or they were not on your mind before now listen carefully we began to look at the gift called word of knowledge word of knowledge first corinthians chapter 12 verse 8 first corinthians chapter 12 verse 8 for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. That's a very bad translation. Because the word, the word of knowledge will go beyond the gifts of the spirit. The word, it goes beyond the gifts of the spirit. Because that word, word there is the same word logos. Logos. The word. Used for Jesus. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. The King James got that word wrong. Notice he uses the word. The word was with God. The word was God. That can be a gift of the spirit. The term logos is used in there as a Greek word that means account. To account. Or a Greek word that means mindset. Or summary of something. Or the totality of something. Logos. The totality. The summary. The mindset. The account. Or an account. So when he says the word. The word is different from a word. They are not the same. The word is different from a word. When he calls Jesus the word, the word will mean he preceded the events. He preceded the events. That's he predated the events. The word. In the deathless past, in the dark ages, in the eternities of the eternities, before the world began was the word. The word has no beginning. The word began the beginning. So he preceded the events. A word will refer to an account, not the account. An account, not the account. The word is a full picture. A word is a part of the picture. The word is a full picture. A word is a part of the picture. A fragment. So the word used for Jesus 
the word pre the event. A word will be from the event. The word pre the event. A word from the event. So a word of knowledge or logos was used in ancient Greek for journalists or better still eyewitness. People are supposed to tell us what they saw and they will tell us the events. A word was used for those who were eyewitnesses. That is they either were aware of what happened or they, or they are giving you the true account of what is happening presently. So a word will mean an eyewitness account or someone who was present or first-hand experience of what was going on. So a word of knowledge is what should be there, not the word of knowledge. A word. The word knowledge is the word gnosis. G-N-O-S-I-S. It means to experience or experience. Gnosis. It's used for experiment, and it's also used for observation, gnosis. Experience, experiment, observation, gnosis. So a word of knowledge will be an account of something that has happened or an account of something that is happening. It's not something that will happen or something that should happen. It's what has happened or what is happening now. That's a word of knowledge. So for you to have a word of knowledge, it shows it can only be granted. It's something that has happened or is happening. You can't think it up. It's not guesswork. Something that has happened or something that is already happening, a word of knowledge. Listen carefully. You do not say amen to a word of knowledge. Because mm -mm. it's already happening. Or it has happened. If I walk to a woman right now in church and I say to her, glory to God, sister, you're pregnant. You're pregnant. She doesn't know it. Her husband doesn't know it. You're pregnant. I'm not saying you will be pregnant. I'm telling you right now, as you're standing here, you're pregnant, but you don't know it. And I'm giving you a word of knowledge. I don't need her amen. I'm giving her an information to help her. So if she's wise, she'll go and do a pregnancy test. Confirms it and begin to be careful because she's carrying a baby, but didn't know when it entered. That's a word of knowledge. You don't say amen to a word of knowledge. You only take the information and use it. Am I explaining? Yeah. Because it's something that has happened or something that is happening already. So your amen is not needed. <laughs> we don't need your amen. Teaching good. Remember, it's a word of knowledge, not details of knowledge. Not story of knowledge. It's a word. It's a word. I just saw something. I saw something. I just saw something. All the gifts of the spirit take on the character of God. No gift of the spirit will contradict God's character. So if God does not disgrace people, a gift of the spirit does not disgrace people. They take on the character of God. <laughs> you know? That already begins to, to, to put things in perspective. So we know native doctors, soothsayers, diviners, and sorcerers from the gifts of the spirit. The gifts of the spirit take on the character of God. They do not, God does not fight himself. God doesn't fight himself. The gifts of God in the believer cannot contradict the character of God. Rather, it will enhance the character of God. Are we together here? 
I just saw that, you know. You know, many of you have had encounters with the word of knowledge, but you didn't know it was. Because you were not taught. In fact, everybody here. Because most of the time, we do not know the difference. We do not know the difference between the word of knowledge and the inward witness. They are not the same. There's a difference between the word of knowledge and the inward witness. Please stay with me now. Give me a few more minutes. Romans chapter 8 verse 16. See the way brother Paul puts it. In Romans chapter 8 verse 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. That we are the children of God. The word witness. The word witness. The word witness there means an agreement or an endorsement. An agreement or an endorsement. It is used three times in the New Testament Greek. Three times. It's the same root word Jesus used in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall be witnesses unto me. Acts 1 8. You shall be witnesses. So to have a witness, we must have two witness of. Witness of another person. You shall be witnesses unto me. That's a second witness. Two. Two makes it a witness. Now, that word, inward witness, has to do with an inward impression. An impression. The good part about that that word bears witness with is that it is not a noun. The spirit bears witness with is not a noun. Because if it is a noun, we can say, well, we can have it at salvation. But it's not a noun. It's a verb. It's an active word. So that word witness is an action. That means it's an experience. A witness. Paul used it twice in Romans 9 1. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience, my conscience also bearing me witness. Where? In the Holy Ghost. That's experiential. Romans 2 15. Brother Paul again. Romans 2.15 Which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Their conscience also bearing witness. And their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. The word witness is the Greek word somatio. Somatio. I, I spell so you don't go and write something funny. S-U-W-M-U-M-U-S-U-M-U-M-U. Hmm? S U M U M U A R T E U O Somatio. It means to agree with something. It means to see something and to say what you have seen. To agree with something, to see something and to say what you have seen. Somatio. So the inward witness can be seen as an experience. That means we have a vital experience of the Holy Spirit. We have a vital experience of the Holy Spirit that gives us active impressions. It gives us active impressions. Vital experience of the Holy Spirit that gives us active impressions. That is... There is an activity of the Holy Ghost in our hearts. There's an activity of the Holy Ghost in our hearts. So, the inward witness is an impression or better still. The inward witness is an expression. It's an impression or an expression. This is another way to define it. An inward witness is a witness of the Holy Spirit in us. A witness of the Holy Spirit in us. Stay with me. 
a witness of the Holy Spirit in us which testifies refutes and doses which testifies refutes and doses or agrees with a fact that is exposed to it that's a witness an inward witness is a witness of the Holy Spirit in us which testifies, refutes, endorses, or agrees with a fact that is exposed to it. The inward witness is an expression or a witness of the Holy Ghost in the believer which witnesses to testify for, refutes, agrees, endorses a fact that is exposed to it that is something exposed to you and as you looked at it on your inside there's an endorsement or a refutal or a disagreement or an agreement Kenneth Hagin used to say it's like wearing wet socks in your shoe it doesn't sit Mm. you know that uh -uh. it shouldn't be like this mm. the next thing you're looking for is how to remove it dry the socks and put it back you know what I'm talking about yeah. because if you don't the way your legs will smell I used to have a friend when he removes his shoes even the neighbors will be shouting <laughs> I'm not good. <laughs> Even the neighbors, that is because he used to keep it on the fence <laughs> so that it can minister to all the neighborhood. <laughs> that, that pair of shoe, Pastor Glidden, <laughs> don't be laughing like that. <laughs> if you know how that guy tormented us. When it's time for him to remove his shoes, we're all praying. Let him just sleep and forget it. His legs will smell. We bought him new socks, but it's like the spirit had entered the leg. We sent him to doctors for treatment. The leg resisted treatment. What do you do? You have to think of how to lay hands. Because whatever resists medical science, only the supernatural. But even if you pray, he has to receive it. And he refused to receive it because he was enjoying the smell. He's still alive. He has not died. <laughs> Recently, I saw him in Abuja. I looked at his legs. <laughs> I looked at the legs. I said, wonderful. We suffered in these legs. I said, so how are you doing? <laughs> Man. Because legs are not supposed to wear wet socks in shoes. So that's how you feel. It's like something has been told you by somebody. And as a person is talking and smooth mouth. Inside you. Inside you. Mm, mm. He even brought something to show as proof. Mm, 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 mm. I remember years ago, some, some guys came to this place and decided that they were going to do a business with us in dollars. You remember the story? Then our church was still young. They came in here and they brought some chemicals. If you remember those days, that they are going to wash paper and when they wash it, it will turn into American dollars. Okay, so they came to my office and they were trying to lure us into that thing because we all wanted dollars. Then one woman just came and had it and just took over the business. She said, no, 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 you people don't know. I, I know what to do. She took the people to her house. When they went to her house, they showed her abracadabra. She fell for it. Then she came back with them to her office and said, I saw the dollars. I know, I know dollars. I've been to America. I know dollars. I know American dollars. When greed enters a man, he talks as if he's the owner of the world. I know American dollars. American dollars. Mama looked at her and said, Something inside me is doing like this. We are seeing dollars, but inside me 
it is not settling as dollars. The woman said, ah, don't worry. Me, I know dollars. Mama said, okay, you people should go to your house and do it. They went and duped this woman, cleared her, because it was no original dollars. It was fake dollars. Took a lot of money from her. She came back crying. Mama said, but I told you that I may not know dollars, but I know this thing. He told me that there was something wrong. The inward witness. You know, it will either endorse or refute. Or it will testify. The inward witness is an expression of a witness of the Holy Ghost in the believer. Which witnesses to something that is testified for, refuted, agrees or endorses a fact. That is, to have an inward witness, there must be a fact that is exposed to it. There must be a fact that is exposed to it. Someone says something to you and you find there's a check in your heart. That check is a response to that fact the person is giving. That's an inward witness. That response that comes out of you spontaneously. Well, you know, that, um, something that requires to find something out or to discover something new. So the inward witness brother Paul had, he had that experience also. Look at brother Paul's experience as I close this out. Are you blessed tonight? We continue from here tomorrow. Acts chapter 16 verse 18. Brother Paul. Uh, and did, and this did she many days. But Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit. What was the spirit saying from verse 16? Please follow this because I want to break some tables now. From verse 16. It came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain. This, this gift is used for making money. These soothsayers, when you see people who wear suit and tie and call themselves prophets or men of God, that cannot prophesy without asking for money. They are soothsayers. What are they? Wait, put it up. She was possessed with a spirit. See, because it is a spirit, they, there will be supernatural information. Don't be wowed. By supernatural information. The highest revelation. Is the written word of God. She was. There are many so called prophets in Africa. In Africa. With big big titles. In fact not just Africa. All over the world now. Even in Aquaibom here. They are possessed. With a spirit of divination. I'm not joking. I'm serious here. Put it up. See how this spirit operates. Which met us. Which brought our masters. Don't forget the target. Don't forget the target. Which brought our masters. Much gain how? By soothsaying. How does soothsaying operate? Next verse. The same followed Paul and us. And cried saying. These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation, true or false. So their prophecy is always accurate. That's where they get many of you. See, me and the man, I'm the man, they will even say, have I met you before? Do I know you before? Have we ever spoken on phone? Should I dig deep? Deeper. Have we ever seen before? No. Because it's a soothsaying spirit, we don't have to have met before. It's divination. They are diviners. 
And when they are finishing, they must collect money. Because that's the target. If it is God, freely you have received. See, if money was not involved, many of them would not be doing it. If money was not involved, many of them will not do it all. The, the information is accurate. This man be the man of the most high God will show us the way of accurate. You will even hear people shouting dito, 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 dito. They call it forensic. Forensic prophecy. Forensic. That woman was doing forensic. Possessed. By a spirit of divination. Their motivation is the money. That's a motivation. Ask them to do that prophecy for free for three months. They won't do it. They won't do it. Why? Because what they are in it for is the money. I'm telling you. Hearing me on radio, on television, social media, or in the building here. Look at it. Put that scripture up again. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, as she was doing it, that thing. You know that thing? Mm, ah, mm, the information is correct, but mm, mm, there's something smelling like toilet around. Mm, there are times I cast out demons. The moment I say, out, it will look like the open socket tea pit. The whole environment will be smelling toilet because the spirit is unclean. And sometimes there are many. When we out them, they smell the environment and go. When you have discerning of spirit, you can even smell evil spirits. When you begin to function in discernment, you smell it. You see somebody well dressed, wearing a nice expensive suit, expensive wristwatch. But as he's coming to you, toilet is smelling. You wonder what is this? It's a spirit. You need to look at him and say, Out! You will see, ah, ah, ah. shh, out. Then give him the gospel. Because a normal dress person, expensive, with perfume, should not smell. We will get there. Say we will get there. I'm not here to say we will get there. A lady is following Paul. Uh -uh. Why should a lady be following a man of God? Not even a young man. A lady. For many days. Uh -uh. What did he owe you? <laughs> he was following him around. This man. Be the man of the most high that shows the way of salvation. Brother Paul, try you. If not me from the start, I will give her a right hand of fellowship. You know right hand of fellowship from the, from, from the back. Paul allow her for some days. Bible says after a few days, Paul turned and said, Out! Paul was grieved. The word grieved in the spirit means he was annoyed. That is, the inward witness is an emotion. There's an emotion you will feel that mm -mm, you don't want to take it anymore. An emotion that repels. Is a response from your spirit about something. That's an inward witness. And every child of God has it. Likewise, the spirit itself. But you see, the inward witness is not the, the word of knowledge. A word of knowledge is different from an inward witness. Tomorrow we will identify the difference. Get on your feet. That's all I got for. Glory. 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 Somebody shout, I'm possessed by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, I expose diviners, sorcerers, and suit sayers.
Amen. Are you blessed tonight? Say all of the abilities of God are on my inside. I have endowments by the spirit of God. Therefore, I function supernaturally in this world. Amen. Father, we pray that everybody under the sound of my voice tonight grows in knowledge, grows in grace, equipped by the power of the Holy Ghost. Revelation knowledge from the word continues to grow in this house until nothing else matters. We give you praise. Sick bodies be healed. Barriers terminated. Delays cancelled. In the name of Jesus. When you need a miracle, receive a miracle now. Receive, receive a miracle now. Receive a miracle now. Father, we give you praise for healing. Thank you for healing. Somebody here with excruciating waist pain. Excruciating waist pain is living now. Is living now. In the name of Jesus. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. Quickly. Lekota manega karata. That's God's healing power over that body. Agadonenen shakato belegeria. Arodo sokela marako tonika kalina manaka. Agajo tote bahata. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. And every believer says that amen on a note of celebration. Can we celebrate the word of God with a shout, a scream? The way you're celebrating this word, I don't like it at all. Glory to God. Glory. Somebody shout, I have all the abilities of God. On my inside right now i have the witness of the holy ghost at work amen get a good offering we want to give and worship jesus tonight we give in faith we give with joy every time we give we give in support of the advancement of god's good news around the world through your givings more people are coming to the knowledge of the truth through your giving we're able to get more people to hear this good word remember somebody gave for you to hear so you also have to give so other people can hear. I want to thank partners and friends who continually support this ministry. Through your givings, you are enabling us to do more for the kingdom. Thank you for being a partner. And if you are not yet one, you want to partner with us and support us intentionally and deliberately every month towards this gospel. You can shoot a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. And thank you for giving to support the vision of reintroducing Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. Praise God. We want to thank you. And I want to also mention the radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush, read the banking details in another two or three minutes as we sit in the other studio for Ask the Counselor now. I'd like you to lift up your offerings. Father, we give in faith. We give with joy. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you. Every need is met. And thank you for the blessing upon this house. In Jesus' name we pray. And every believer says a powerful amen. Anywhere on the pulpit, we're going to give the offerings. Hit the music. Let's do it as we give tonight. Glory.